بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته continuing with our journey through Imdut al-Fiqh of Imam Ibn al-Qadam al-Maqtasi rahimahu Allah ta'ala طيب باب الغسل من الجنابة the chapter of making غسل from جنابة okay now غسل you can mention this word with the dhamma فتحة كسرة how is that غسل 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 what does it mean if I say غسل with the dhamma Remember wudu with the dhamma. What does it mean? It's the act, right? The ghusl with the dhamma is the act. Ghusl with the fatha is with the fatha is the thing that you make the ghusl with, meaning the water, okay? With the kasra, ghusl, it's that which you are using to wash your hair, for example. The Arabs, they used to use a mixture of uh, flowers or plants or something of that nature. And if you use something of that nature, then with the kasra, it refers to removing that from your hair, okay? So just some extra information. The technical definition of ghusl is استعمال ماء طهور في جميع البدن أو في جميع البدن على صفة مخصوصة. استعمال ماء طهور في جميع بدن على صفة مخصوصة. To use pure water on the whole of the body in a particular manner. Okay? Its linguistic meaning, okay, ghusl, uh, Sorry, ghusl from janaba. Janaba has a linguistic meaning, uh, junab of the meaning of bu'd, okay? From tajannab. Ya tajannab shay, yani he stays away from it. And likewise, we see this in the hadith with Abu Huraira, radiyallahu anhu, he was once in a state of impurity. So he saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa minhu. So he disappeared from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked about him later, where were you, ya Abu Huraira? He said, Ya Rasulullah, I was in a state of Jinaba. And I, I hated, I disliked to sit with you whilst I was in a state of not being pure. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Subhanallah, glory be to Allah, inna al Muslim la yanjus hayyan wa la mayyitan. Glory be to Allah that the believer doesn't become impure whether alive or dead. Okay? But the point being from what I'm mentioning, that the word Jinaba. It has the meaning of distance. So you stay, you keep a distance from people if you're in a state of a janaba, and you keep a distance from the prayer. طيب. The Imam, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, وَالْمُوجِبُ لَهُ خُرُوجُ الْمَنِي The thing which obligates a ghusl upon you, the first thing is the khuruj of money. That the money, we know this is the substance which we were created from in English sperm. Okay? It's sifat is that it's thick, thakhin, it's thick, okay? It's sticky, and it has a smell like that of rotten egg, okay? And it has a yellowish, whitish color. These are the sifat, these are the characteristics that the ulama, they mention. And it comes out dafqan, it comes out with a burst, okay? As what's the verse in the Quran? Khuliqa min ma'in dafiq. Man has been created from that water which comes out in spurts, okay? So this money is the first thing, if it comes out difqan or dafqan, if it comes out in a spurt with pleasure, then you have to make ghusl from that. Because the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith of Abi Sa'id al-Khudri in Sahih Muslim, al-ma' min al-ma' innama al-ma' min al-ma' Verily, when you see the water, meaning the money, you have to make ghusl for that, okay? Now this applies to both men and women. Because in the hadith of Umm Sulaim in Bukhari, she said, Ya Rasulullah, O Prophet of Allah, inna Allah ta'ala la yastahi min al-haq. Verily, Allah Azawajal is not shy from truth. فَهَلْ أَلَى الْمَرْأَةِ مِنْ غُسْلٍ إِذَا هِيَ احْتَلَمَتْ So does a woman have to perform ghusl if she has a wet dream? The Prophet ﷺ said, نَعْمْ إِذَا رَأَتِ الْمَا Yes, if she sees the water, if she sees the liquid in the wet dream, meaning this money comes out, then she also has to make the ghusl. So what did I say? I said this, the sifa, the, the, the characteristic of this, that it has to come out with pleasure and it has to come out in a burst, okay? So if it comes out with no pleasure and it doesn't come out with a burst, then the person doesn't have to make ghusl janaba from this because it could be due to extreme cold, it could be due to a sickness or something of that nature. If it comes out not due to that pleasure, okay, and not due to a burst, the person doesn't need to make ghusl, he just washes it and makes wudu from it. Okay, so far? Tayyib. 
This doesn't apply though, this ruling doesn't apply to a person when he's sleeping. Why? I said it has to come out uh, in a burst and it has to come out with pleasure. But it doesn't apply to the one who finds money after having woken up from sleep because he's unconscious and he can't tell if it came out with pleasure or if it came out with a burst, okay? So it doesn't apply to the one, this description, who is sleeping. If the sleeping person wakes up and he sees money, that's enough for him. He has to make a wudu from it, okay? But as for the waking person, it's with the conditions that it comes out on its natural characteristic of being a burst and due to pleasure. Tayyib. The Imam says after this, he says, the second reason for you to make ghusl, waltiqa al khitanain that the two private parts they meet, the two, uncircum the two circumcised parts they meet. Now this is a very polite way, respectful way of mentioning marital relationships, okay? Or they say the two private parts they meet. It's very respectful in Islam. Though we don't shy away from the truth, when we discuss these topics, we still try to discuss them in a respectful manner. That's why you find some people in the West they make the mistake, yes, they have knowledge, may Allah bless them, but when it comes to the mannerisms of discussing these topics, they give too many crude do details. There's no need for that. You keep it as respectful as possible. So the Imam says, and the meeting of the two circumcised parts. The meeting of the two circumcised parts of the man and the woman, it doesn't merely mean touching. It means that the actual married act takes place. Okay, it doesn't mean touching only. It means the actual act takes place. In Sahih Muslim, the Prophet said, إِذَا جَلَسَ بَيْنَ شُعْبِهَا الْأَرْبَعَا وَمَسَ الْخِطَانُ الْخِطَانَ فَقَدْ وَجَبَ الْغُسَلِ If the person sits between her four body parts and the two private parts meet, meaning that the actual act takes place, then the ghusl becomes obligatory upon them. And in the narration, وَإِن لَمْ يُنزِلْ Even if ejaculation doesn't take place. By the virtue of the fact that the act took place, the penetration, then a ghusl is obligatory even if there's no penetration. So many people, their whole lives, they make the mistake. They don't make ghusl because they say, I didn't ejaculate, nothing came out from me. This is a big mistake. Just by virtue of the act, that is enough for the ghusl to take place. طيب. Other reasons why a ghusl can become obligatory apart, apart from the first two. What, what were the first two I mentioned? The Imam he mentioned. What were they? I can't hear you. Ejaculation with pleasure and second one was the actual act. Okay, the penetration in the act. Taib, also the ulama they mention that if a person is a new Muslim, the Hanbali scholars they mention if a person is a new Muslim, then this also is a reason for the person to have to make ghusl. Though it's not a ghusl of raf al-hadith. Okay, but it's, it's something which is obligatory. Why? Because in the hadith in Abi Dawood and Tirmidhi, Qais ibn Asim radiallahu anhu, he said that when I became a Muslim, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ordered me to go away and to perform a ghusl. Taib. Another reason where ghusl has to be made is that for the dead person. The person when he passes away, then it's an obligation upon the ummah, upon the community, that they wash the dead person. Why do they wash the dead person? Is it due to the najasa of the dead person? Does the dead person become najas? Does he become impure? Cannot become impure because I mentioned the hadith previously of Abu Huraira that in al-Muslim la yanjus hayyan wa la mayyitan that the Muslim, the believer, doesn't become impure whether he's alive or dead. So rather it's out of takrim for him. It's out of honoring the dead person that we give him that washing as Allah and the Prophet ﷺ has commanded us to do so. The third reason why ghusl will become obligatory on a person and it's for the women is when they have the issue of hayd, when they have the menstrual menstruation, when they have the menstruation which comes to them in their time once a month and we'll discuss this in a few chapters. And also if they uh, experience nifas, nifas is postnatal bleeding, okay? If they experience the nifas, postnatal bleeding. Now some of the ulama, they said also comes under this category of when ghusl is obligatory upon you, is the ghusl of huh? Juma, the ghusl of Juma. Some of them, they said the ghusl of Juma is obligatory because in the hadith in Bukhari and Muslim, the Prophet sallallahu said, ghusl Juma wajibun ala kulli muhtalim. That everybody who reaches the age of puberty, then the ghusl of Juma is wajib upon this person. Okay, this is one narration in Bukhari Muslim. The majority they said no. The majority of the ulama they said no because in the hadith in Tirmidhi, the Prophet ﷺ said, Man tawadda al Juma, fabiha wa ni'ma. Whoever makes wudu on the day of 
Juma, then that suffices. That is well and good. Wal ghuslu afdal. And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that to make ghusl is preferred. So here he's saying it's something which is preferred for you to do, highly recommended, highly stressed. So how do we understand the first hadith in Bukhari where it said it's wajib? The ulama, they say this is the linguistic meaning, not the technical meaning. The linguistic meaning here, meaning something which is highly stressed. Okay? Something which is highly stressed. Okay? So we take it as the linguistic meaning. In any case, our imam, he mentioned two points. And those are the points you need to remember. If you can remember the extra information, well and good. The two points that imam mentioned, khuruj al-mani, Okay, the, the money comes out or the two private parts, they meet. طيب. The imam, he goes on and he says, The obligatory parts of this ghusl, first and foremost, is the niyyah, the intention. Okay, why do we have to have intention? Because the Prophet ﷺ said, Every action is tied to its tension and intention and every person is rewarded according to his intention right so this is a must the niya it has two components two fahad components what are these two components huh the niya the intention has two components what are they first is for allah niyat and niyatu ma'mun lahu who are you making this worship for you have to ensure that it's for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you waste your time if you do it for other than allah waste of time the second component, ahsant, for the action itself, differentiating, is this wajib, is it sunnah? Okay, which type of action am I doing? Am I doing obligatory, am I doing nafil? Okay, so the niyyah, it has two components. In any case, we said that the obligatory action, the first and foremost, from the ghusl, it has to have the niyyah. The imam, he says, وَتَعْمِيمُ بَدَنِهِ بِالْغَسْلِ And to ensure that the water reaches the whole of the person's body. The whole of the person's body has to be covered in water. Okay? Ma'al madmada wal istinshaq. What is madmada? To put it in your water in your mouth and rinse it. Wal istinshaq. To sniff the water into your nose. Wal istinthar. To take it out. Okay? So the Imam is saying it's obligatory. Ta'mim al badan. Okay? With the water. To cover your whole body with water. And to ensure that you do madmada. Madmada afwan. Well, istinshaq, okay? The Prophet Sallallahu in Abi Dawood, he said, the Prophet Sallallahu said, Man taraka mawdi'a sha'ratin min janabatin lam yaghsilha fu'ila bihi kada wa kada min nar The Prophet Sallallahu said in the hadith in Abi Dawood, whoever leaves off one strand of hair's worth of place where there was janaba, meaning the person's in a state of janaba, and he didn't cover his whole body with water, then such and such will be happening to him in the fire. Meaning he'll be punished. Okay? So the way to remove the state of Janaba, the Hadith of Akbar, is to ensure that water penetrates or covers the whole of your body. Okay? That means it must reach the roots of your hair. It must reach inside of your nose, inside of your mouth, under your armpits. If you have a big belly, you have to lift your belly up and rub under the belly. Okay? Wherever body part is, you have to ensure that the water reaches that part. Now, this is known as ghusl al mujze The ghusl al mujze which suffices, the sufficient ghusl, okay? But there is now, we're going to start speaking about the ghusl al kamil okay? The complete ghusl, ghusl which is sunnah, okay? But if you were just to do this, if you wanted to purify yourself from ghusl, from, from janaba, you just have to jump in the swimming pool, make the intention to remove the hadith al-akbar, swim a little bit so your whole body is soaked, make the madmada and the instant shaq. Okay, that's all you need to do and your ghusl is removed. Now we come to the complete ghusl. So the imam, he says, وَتَسُنُّ tasmiya." The tasmiya to say bismillah is sunnah. Okay, according to the imam and the majority. But the mu'tamad opinion, the relied upon opinion in the Hanbali madhab from whom the imam is a leader of, so he's differing now with his madhab because he's a mujtahid. He's allowed to do that. Okay? So, but the mu'tamad opinion of the madhab is that it's obligatory to say uh, bismillah. Okay? But his opinion in the majority, they say it's sunnah. The imam, he says, وَأَنْ يَدْلُكْ بَدْنَهُ بِيَدِهِ And to make dalak with your hand over your body, which means that where the water is on your body, you wipe to ensure what? That the water is reaching every part of your body, right? So you pour in the water and at the same time, sunnah, dalk, okay, to ensure that water 
goes everywhere because your hands are going over your body. وَيَفْعَلُوا كَمَا رَوَتْ مَيْمُونَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهَا And you do as Maymuna رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهَا Umm Al-Mu'mineen, she uh, narrates. This hadith can be found, uh, narrated, collected by Imam Ahmad, and its wording is also found close in Bukhari, in another narration. Maymuna رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ She said, سَتَرْتُ أَنْ نَبِي صَلَّى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمُ I concealed the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم فَاخْتَسَلَ مِنَ الْجَنَابَ So he went ahead and made a ghusl from Janaba. فَبَدَأَ فَغَسْلَ يَدَيْهِ So he began and he started to wash his hands. He began and started to wash his hand. ثُمَّ صَبَّ بِيَمِينِهِ عَلَى شِمَالِهِ Then he took water from the right and he poured it onto his left. فَغَسْلَ مَا أَصَابَ فَغَسْلَ فَرْجَهُ وَمَا أَصَابَهُ And with the water in his left hand, he washed his private area and anything which was on it from the money. Okay? ثُمَّ ضَرَّبَ بِيَدِهِ then the Prophet ﷺ took his hand, okay, or his hands, and he wiped them on the wall or on the earth. Why do you think the Prophet ﷺ did that? Why did he wipe his hands on the wall or on the earth after washing his private part? If there's any najasa on his hand, right, to remove any sticky stuff or anything of that nature, we today, we could just use the soaps and det- detergents, that suffices. Okay, and then the Prophet ﷺ made complete wudu for his salah. Okay, and then he poured water. Then he poured water upon his body, so it covers his whole body. And then he moved a little bit and he washed his feet. Okay, so this is the complete ghusl that I mentioned. Now here you notice something in the narration. What, what did you notice was a bit strange in the narration? Ahsan, jazakallah khair. He moved and he washed his feet. So he ends up washing his feet how many times? Sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Two times. Once in the wudu, once when he moved to wash his feet. First and foremost, why did he move to wash his feet? The ulama, they say, probably the place could have been a sandy or a muddy, dirty place where he was making the ghusl. So he had to move from there to again wash his feet to get rid of that turab, etc. Okay, so it wasn't part of the ghusl itself. Okay, secondly, some of the ulama, they say, just to ensure that the sunnah stays alive, do it sometimes. Meaning, make the wudu completely in the ghusl and at the same time, move from where you made and wash your feet so that sunnah stays alive. Tayyib. وَلَا يَجِبُ نَقْطُ شَعْرِ فِي غَسْلِ الْجَنَابَ إِذَا رَوَى أَصُولَهُ And it's not imperative to take apart the hair which is tied up, whether in braids or however the fashions are, they tied up in knots. When you make ghusl from janaba, it's not essential to take it apart, whether a man or a woman, as long as the water reaches the roots of the hair. If the water cannot reach the roots of the hair, that's when you have to unbraid and unplait and untie the hair to ensure that water reaches the roots of the hair okay now this is for the hukum hair is for ghusl al janaba okay not for ghusl al hayd the ghusl of the menstruation the woman has to undo her braids and her plates and her whatever she has why is that the case do you think why in the ghusl of janaba we say no need to undo but in the ghusl of hayd you need to undo one of two, either the hayd is a more extreme hadith al-akbar, is a higher state of hadith, okay, than janaba, so it needs more care. Or, the ulama, they say, the ghusl janaba is more often, okay, more often. So the sharia, come, the rules of Allah come with ease. So to make it easy for the person, they don't have to undo, whereas the hayd is only once in the month. So in that point, they have to undo, okay, so that's the difference there. The imam, he says, وَإِذَا نَوَى بِغَسْلِهِ طَهَارَتَيْنْ أَجْزَأَ أَنْهُمَا If the person makes an intention with this ghusl to remove the two hadith, the two hadith, taharatayn, which two hadith? Hadith al-akbar wa hadith al-asghar. Hadith al-akbar, the things which are caused, which uh, cause you to have to make ghusl. The hadith al-akbar, the things which cause you to break your wudu. Okay, so if you make the intention when making this ghusl for both of them to be removed, then they will both be removed. Okay, in the ghusl al janaba, this is a key point here. This is only for ghusl al janaba. First and foremost, what is the evidence to say that this can be the case? 
In Surah Al-Nisa, Surah Al-Nisa, Allah Azza wa Jal says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, la taqrabu salah wa antum sukara hatta ta'lamu ma taqulun. Oh, you who believe, don't approach the salah in a state of intoxication until you know what you are saying. Wala junaban, and nor a one who is in a state of janaba, haddat al-akbar, illa abir sabil unless he is passing through the masjid. Meaning, don't approach the prayer, and do not approach the masjid unless you are passing through if you are in a state of janaba. Hatta taghtasilu until you make ghusl. So once you've made ghusl, you can do what? Go ahead and pray and approach the masjid. Right? So the verse is telling us that if you make ghusl, you don't need to make wudu. You can go ahead and you can pray. If you made the intention to remove the two states of hadith, the hadith al-akbar and hadith al-asghar. So we said that this is in Ghusl al-Janaba or Ghusl al-Hayd, okay, in these two situations. The Ghusl of Janaba and Hayd, the person can make the intention to remove the two hadith. But in the Ghusl, which is a Sunnah Ghusl, like the Ghusl for Jumma, or the Ghusl for Yawm al-Arafa, for example, or the Ghusl for any time when the person is in a gathering, these are Sunnah Ghusls, it doesn't apply to this situation. Why? Because there's no Raf al-Hadith, there's no removing of the state of impurity. In the, in, the, in the ghusl for Jumma, why do you make it? For Jumma. You're not making the ghusl because you're removing a state of impurity. So in this situation, you cannot have the intention that this ghusl is going to suffice me removing my hadith al-akbar as well as the hadith al-asghar, which is the wudu. It doesn't suffice. So only in the ghusl for the janaba and the hayd, you do not need to make wudu. In all of the other ghusls, you need to make wudu, right? Clear? Keep it simple, right? Ghusl, Janaba, you need to make wudu. Other ghusls, you do not need to make wudu because there's no rough al hadith there. Taib, second point pertaining to this if when making this ghusl, you break your wudu, you touch your private part or something comes out, you pass wind, what's the situation here? Here, you do not need to repeat the ghusl. All you need to do is repeat the wudu. The Imam says, وَكَذَلِكَ لَوْ تَيَمَّمَ لِلْحَدَثَيْنِ وَالنَّجَاسَ لَعَ بَدْنِهِ عَلَىٰ بَدْنِهِ أَجْزَاءَ عَنْ جَمِيْهِمَا Likewise, if a person has to make tayammam, because there's no water, he has to make tayammam, we'll study this next chapter. He has to make tayammam, there's no water. And he does this for the two hadith, the hadith al-akbar and hadith al-asghar. And also he does it because there's some najasa on his body. So there's three things here. He's in a state of hadith al-akbar, hadith al-asghar, and there's najasa upon his body, but there's no water to remove that. So he makes tayammam with the intention to remove all of these, then that suffices. As long as he has the intention, right? But if he made the intention only for one of the three or two of the three to be removed, then he gets only that what he intended for. Clear? Tayyib. Extra points. Pertaining to the ghusl, there's no tartib and there's no muwalat. What's tartib? I sent a very good uh, sequence, like we mentioned when we spoke about wudu. Wudu has to be in sequence, right? You cannot do your, uh, uh, you know, your, you cannot just make it up as you go along. It has to be in sequence. But here, in ghusl, there's no tartib. You can do it as you wish. You can start with your legs. You can start from the top. You can start from the side, anywhere you want. The point is that the whole of your body is covered in water, okay? So if you do a somersault into the water and your head gets covered before your legs or your legs get covered before your head, then that's all well and good. The second thing is there's no muwalat, continuity, right? In the wudu, we said that the limbs should not dry before the wudu is complete, meaning that once, uh, if I'm making wudu, when I go to the next limb, it shouldn't be before the previous limb dries. There shouldn't be anything breaking that connectivity of the act of worship but here in the ghusl it's not a problem so if a person makes a ghusl but he forgets to wash his feet right by the time he goes to pray he remembers i need to wash my feet i didn't do that he can go back and wash his feet and that suffices okay because there's no continuity there's no muwalat here Tayyib. the prophet وسلم, was the cleanest of creation of allah azawajal and he was the most who would be eager in keeping himself pure. The Prophet ﷺ would use a sa of water. A sa in quantity is roughly eight handfuls of water. Can you imagine? Eight handfuls, handfuls of water. That's it, to make ghusl, 
right? So those of us who leave the taps open and we have a nice daydream while we're making the wudu, try to leave that off. We need to conserve water, okay? So it's a resource which belongs to the whole of humanity. Things which are not allowed for the person who is in a state of janaba, okay? In a state of janaba. And this is mentioned in Zad al Mustaqni, okay? Zad al Mustaqni, we said, is the next level up of the book. Reading Quran, whether you're touching the Quran or you're doing it from your memory, okay? Reading the Quran is not allowed if you're in a state of janaba. Ali radiallahu anhu, he mentions, as collected by Abi Dawood and Tirmidhi, that he said, Kana Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa al-Quran ma lam yakun junaban. The Prophet sallallahu always used to read us Quran unless he was in a state of janaba. So what is the thing that prevented him from reading Quran, whether touching the mushaf or from memory, is if in a state of janaba. Also, the person should not stay in the masjid if they're in a state of janaba, as we mentioned in the verse in Surah Al-Nisa, unless you are just passing through the masjid, okay? Hatta taghtasilu, until you purify yourselves by making ghusl, okay? And also, the person cannot make tawaf around the bait, around the Kaaba, if they are in a state of janaba. Tayyib, recommended acts for somebody to do if they are in a state of janaba. They are in a state of janaba now. Recommended are three things. If the person wants to eat, he should make wudu after washing his private parts. If the person wants to sleep, he should make wudu after washing his private parts. If the person wants to revisit the marital relationship with his wife and he hasn't made ghusl for the first time, then he washes the private part and makes wudu. Okay, where is this mentioned? It's mentioned by Aisha radiallahu anha in Sahih Muslim. She said, Kana Nabi sallallahu alayhi sallam, Ida kana junaban fa'arada an yanam, fa'arada an ya'kul aw yanam, tawadda'a wa du'a wa salah The Prophet sallallahu alayhi sallam, if he would be in a state of janaba, meaning he needs to make a ghusl from the janaba, he would be in a state of janaba, and he wanted to eat or he wanted to sleep, he would make his wudu for the salah. And the part about washing the private part is in the hadith of Umar in Bukhari. There he was told that he has to wash his private part if he's in that situation. Tayyib, some masail. Masail is jam mas'ala. Mas'ala, masail is the plural of the word mas'ala. Mas'ala comes from the word su'al, question. So masail and mas'ala are the things which are often asked about. Okay, masail al-fiqh, mas'ala fil-fiqh thing which is often asked about in fiqh. So some masail mentioned in uh, the book, the explanation of Zad al-Mustaqni by Sheikh Hamad al-Hamad, Hafidhullah. He says, if a person has a wet dream and he knows he had the wet dream, but he woke up and he didn't find any wetness, meaning nothing came out. What is the ruling? The ruling here is that there is no ghusl upon the person, nothing upon the person. Tayyip. Clear? Second mas'ala. The person wakes up, he finds some wetness. He's not sure, is it money or is it madhi? Money, we said it's sperm. Madhi, I believe in English, is called prostatic fluid. Madhi, in, in the definition, is that which comes out when you think about uh, erotic thoughts. It comes out after some type of excitement. But it's a lot lighter and, and not as heavy as money. Tayyib. So my point was, if the person wakes up, he finds wetness, he cannot tell if it's money. It's not thick, he can't smell it, it doesn't smell like a rotten egg, he can't see the color of it, that it's yellowish, and he can't tell if it's madhi. What does he do? If the person had some type of thoughts before going to sleep, right, erotic thoughts, then we say that it's going to be madhi, because of the cause of your thoughts. If the person was sure that he had a wet dream, then we take it to be money. Okay, so if he actually had the wet dream, we take it to be money. Tayyib. Another mas'ala, mas'ala number three. If a person, when he's having the relationship with his family, he has some type of wrap around his private part. And this wrap is a thick wrap, which prevents him from uh, enjoyment. Okay, then upon this person, there's no ghusl, unless he ejaculates. So his situation is different to the normal situation. If he has some type of wrap of cloth or something of that nature, why, I don't know, around his private part, right? And um, he has with his wife, 
but he doesn't ejaculate and he has no pleasure because of that rap, then there's no ghusl upon him. But if it's the normal rap, which is known as the condom in this day and age, then the person has to make ghusl because that doesn't prevent him from pleasure. طيب. Also, another mas'ala that the Imam, he mentions, he mentions that if this interaction takes place with the jinn, then again, the ghusl has to be made, okay? Even if it's with the jinn, it has to be made. And the last mas'ala, the, uh, the Sheikh uh, Hamad al-Hamad in his explanation of Zad al-Mustaqna, he mentions that if a man after having made the ghusl, and this is important, if the man after having made the ghusl, more money comes out, he's finished ghusl, he's just about to get the towel, but then he sees more money, oh my God, what a headache, have to repeat. He says here, no repeating of the ghusl is required, okay? So if the money comes out after you've made the full ghusl, there's no repeating of the ghusl required. But if money comes out again with pleasure and it comes out bursting, here you have to repeat the ghusl. Clear? Wa sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Jazakumullah khair. Everything which was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mistakes and shortcomings from myself and shaitan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this small deed heavy in our scale of deeds on the day of judgment. Ameen. If you have any questions on the topic, feel free.